Hey guys, it's Gemini. Welcome to another video. A long time ago, I used to do something called the build of the week, which is where I would take a professional build order and then break it down and write it into a guide to then post to the subreddit, all things Protoss. I haven't really done that in quite a while just because I haven't really had much time to do it and I kind of lost the motivation to do it. But now that I'm doing some more YouTube content, I figured I want to try doing a YouTube video version of a build order guide to see how that works out. And this is the first one that I'm going to do. This one is going to be the example of my PVZ build that I've kind of built and adapted over a while that I think is extremely good as a ladder build. It's very easy, simple, and solid to play on ladder, and it's going to be something that I think a lot of people can use very easily no matter what league you are in. And I'm going to do this in less than 10 minutes just to give you guys the most important parts so that way you can copy this and bring it into your next ladder session. I'm also going to link two replays in the description, one of which being a practice game versus the AI, and another against an actual player on the Korean Grandmaster server, so you can check those out below. So, this build is going to start off the same as basically every other normal macro Protoss build, which is going to be with a one gate fast expand. If you don't know the order for that, here you go. It will be a 14 pylon, then a 16 gateway, a 17 gas, a 20 nexus, a 20 cyber core, a 21 gas, and a 22 pylon. You will do one chrono boost during that, and that's immediately after your first pylon finishes. If you want the timing super crisp, you can bring your first probe from your mineral line at 8 seconds down to the natural, and it'll come down at the exact time to make the first pylon. You can leave the probe there to continue making the gateway. I bring it back just to do some little efficiency thing, but you don't have to worry about doing that. Then, when you're on 16 supply, you can make your gateway and chrono boost right away, send that probe over to scout, and we'll deal with that later. Then you want to rally your Nexus to the Gas Geyser, so that way that probe will then make your gas at 17 supply. Then once you're at 16 out of 16 on Minerals, you'll then continue to rally into that Gas Geyser that's about to finish. The first probe will go ahead and rally and mine gas. The second probe, you can then rally down to your Natural, which is what's going to make the Nexus at your Natural. If you time it right, it should get there basically when you have the amount of Minerals to actually make the Nexus on 20 supply which should be about around 124, 125 if you do it well. From there, you can go immediately into a cybernetic score, make another probe, then make your next gas geyser, and then make another probe and your second pylon. From there, wait until your second pylon is finished to chrono boost your nexus again. If you want to be super efficient, you can do it a little bit before it finishes because there is time to do that. But if you don't want to worry about knowing that exact timing, you can just do it right when the pylon finishes. That's also going to time up exactly to when your cyber core finishes, so then you can start making an adept and warp gate, and you can chrono boost the adept as well. From here on out, you're basically going to be making probes non-stop. I can't stress that enough. You want to be making probes consistently. Do not stop those. Then, once you have all 16, 16, and 3, 3, and all of the minerals and gas, you can rally probes down to the natural. Keep one of them next to your second pylon, so then once you have 150 gas, you can immediately make a stargate at 28 supply. Then when your nexus finishes, start making probes there, chrono boost as well. Then when your adept finishes, queue up a stalker. You could go for a second adept, I prefer going stalker and then second adept, but if you want to go second adept and then stalker, that's totally fine as well. The reason why I go Stalker is this. Basically, the way that this opens up is going to be the safest way that you could possibly play. It's very often you might play against a Zerg player where you don't know exactly what they're doing and it's hard to defend because they might throw a bunch of Lings, Banelings, or Roaches at you. Going for a Stalker second after the Adept first to scout makes it so that way you can easily defend whatever they try to throw at you by putting a battery with that Stalker to allow it to overheal as much as possible. On top of that, with the Stargate, we're not actually going to go Oracle first, we're going to get a Void Ray first. Now this may not be the most efficient way by pro standards, but I think for a ladder game, this is the most solid way to play. It's very safe, you can deny scouting with the Void Ray by killing Overlords, and you can continue to use it defensively without having to worry about energy running out so that way you can easily secure your third base. Now, once the Stargate finishes, that's when you start that Voider and you Chrono Boost it right away. You'll also want to immediately make another Pylon at 43 or 44 Supply. You want to make that as soon as possible because you will get Supply blocked a little bit if you don't do that right away. After that, you want to get your second Gateway to finish off your wall and then also continue to make Probes. Once your Stalker or Second Adept finishes, you want to make the other one. So if you started with a Stalker, go for a Second Adept. If you went for a Second Adept, go for a Stalker. 
If your initial adept scouted some kind of early aggression, or you're just not really sure and just want to be safe, this is when you can put down a shield battery. In combination with overcharge and a stalker, it's going to be able to defend almost anything while you wait for that void ray to finish. Then, once warp gate and your two adepts are finished, make sure to shade those over to your third with a probe, so that way you can make your third base at 4 minutes with a pylon, which will then allow us to make a battery to keep everything nice and safe. Also, once that void ray finishes, we still want to get one oracle. We still need some amount of scouting and map vision, and it could still kill a couple drones if we can. You don't have to go for the drone kills, it's actually not necessary at all, and if you feel you don't have the APM to do that, you can always just sit the oracle over top your third base to help defend it as well. Now, after you make your third base and a pylon at the third base, you're going to immediately make two more gas geysers at your natural, and then you're also going to make a forge and twilight council. So the style that we're going to go is for a charge lot archon attack into disruptor archon zealot. It's an extremely robust army that can deal with many of the zerg compositions and will keep you safe and keep it so that way you don't die easily if they try to go for some big mid-game aggression, which is very common in Zerg vs. Protoss. Once the pylon at your third base finishes, remember to make a battery, as it'll help you keep your adepts alive in case they try to go for any big lane counterattacks. You'll also want to get another pylon over there to help fill out the wall on the left side. It's not necessary, but it does help out a lot. Then you'll start to notice by around 450 or so, you're going to be floating a lot of minerals. This is totally fine because we're about to do a gateway explosion. So you want to get four gateways in the main base before your twilight and forge finishes. Then once those finish up, you'll start plus one attack and charge immediately and then also a Templar archives. All the while this is happening, you're still making probes. Do not stop the probe production. It's so, so important. For now, all of your Chrono Boost is going to be saved just for those two upgrade buildings, the Forge and the Twilight. Don't use them on anything else right now. We already Chronoed probes enough for now. We just want to get these upgrades going ASAP for our push. After you get all that tech set up, you want to get two more gateways so that way you have a grand total of eight. So that way we have a lot of production to actually go for the attack. In the meanwhile, you want to be trying to make as many pylons as possible as well, so that way you don't get supply blocked leading up to this attack. The great thing about this build as well is that the four gateways and the Templar archives will end up finishing at about the same time. So once those are finished up, you can instantly warp in four Templar to morph into two Archons. Any other warp ins will be purely Zealots. Now after you make those two Archons, the next hundred gas you have, you want to instantly make a Robo because with that we'll be able to get an Observer and a Mortal and then start to tech towards Disruptors. Remember to keep Chrono Boosting the Forge and Twilight as well. You're going to do a grand total of three times and the third time you're only going to Chrono Boost the Forge because Charge finishes quicker than plus one so you don't need to use one more Chrono Boost on the Charge. Only one more for the plus one. Then, once the two upgrades are about to finish, you can start to move out across the map with your Archon Zealot army. You can even bring in that first Void Ray that we made to help add a little bit of extra DPS and also to distract the Queen, Focus Fire. Now, this attack comes at kind of an awkward time for a Zerg player that they a lot of times don't actually expect it. So a lot of times you'll end up actually just being able to straight up kill a fourth base from the Zerg player. That's really the goal that you're trying to go for with this push. You want to kill the fourth base back up while you're taking a fourth base of your own. Because as you attack, you're also going to start to get your extra gases at your third, and you're going to start to warp in a fourth base. Now, a lot of times the Zerg player will actually have a lot of units to defend, and if that's the case, you can actually just walk back home. You don't need to fully attack into a Zerg player if they have a lot of units ready. That means that they scouted you and reacted properly, so then in your case, you can just walk back home, set up a couple cannons and batteries, and get your transition set up with more units, and you should be able to defend pretty well. Now when the Robo finishes, like I said before, you want to get an Observer and an Immortal. If they're attacking you immediately, you should prioritize getting an Immortal first until you feel safe. You should also get a second Robo and a Robo Bay. This will allow us to get a lot of Disruptors very quickly, and it really rounds out the composition very nicely. Now during the mid game, you want to be warping in constantly, getting a lot of Archons, getting a lot of Zealots, and then making double Disruptor out of your Robos. You can split off different Zealot waves across the map to harass the enemy and also to pick them apart to allow you to feel more safe back at home as you continue your next tech transition, which is going to be Carriers. Now once your fourth base is getting set up and you have a good economy set up there, you want to go right into three Stargates in total with a fleet beacon to get into the late game tech of carriers. You can also start your plus one air upgrades to get those going, because if you allow yourself to get six carriers with a solid ground army while the Azurg 
player is going for mostly layer tech units, you're going to be in a perfect position to end the game once you get a reasonable trade against their army. And that's basically the build. It's a very simple, solid opener that is very defensive initially, but that also has an early attack that can kill a fourth base or even kill a Zerg player completely if they're totally unprepared. Then after that, you have a nice easy way to transition into Disruptors for a solid mid-game composition and then into Carriers for a very good late-game composition. Let me know how you guys like this format. If you think the video was easy to follow, if you think there's something that could be fixed, leave a comment below. I'll take a look. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos in the future, and I will see you guys in another video.